induction semicolon something, the something is going to get implied to, applied to each case of the induction. And in this proof, several of them will just disappear because what happens after the semicolon completely takes care of all of the subgoals of that uh, case of the induction. So what will be left in this case is just two cases, the, uh, the num case and the plus case. Yes. It is. Yeah, so we, we could have done a little bit more try so uh, to get rid of that case. Sorry? We just sprinkled try on the rewrites and then A on the bottom. Yeah, or maybe or maybe just the try that's there, semicolon try reflexivity. Okay. writing out the fully explicit thing, and then going back and trying to, uh, trying to crunch it a little bit. Uh, you may find kind of halfway through the explicit thing that you, you're beginning to see the structure, and then you can go back and uh, already put in some tries. But, um, but uh, once you start crunching things down, it can be a little bit difficult to understand what's actually happening in your proof. So, uh, so it's better to write it out in the way that you understand and then uh, figure out what, what crunching needs to happen to make it short. Okay, there is a more general form of semicolon where instead of the thing after the semicolon being applied to every subgoal, you give a different thing that happens to each different subgoal. Uh, so, you know, there it is for the sake of reference, but it isn't actually used all that much. The, the simple semicolon form is the, is the usual one. Okay. Let me show you one more thing. Uh, we can define uh, names for strings of tactics, and we can parameterize them. So we can write tactic functions. Uh, and <coughs> here is a simple use of that facility that, uh, that I find incredibly useful in, uh, in doing slightly larger uh, proofs as we're now beginning to do. So up above uh, is, a, uh, is a tactic called simple and try parameterized by a tactic C. Okay, so, uh, so it does simple and then it does try C. Okay, so so that's, a, that's a simple example. Here's a, a slightly more interesting example. Uh, it's called AXP cases. Uh, it's unpronounceable but useful. Uh, and uh, it takes two things. It takes a tactic and then an identifier C. What does it do? It does the tactic and then it does, so semicolon, and then it uses the more general form of the semicolon to, uh, to do <coughs> case aux C and with a different string uh, in, each of the, uh, in each of the cases generated by the, uh, by the first. So typically, first will be induction on uh, some uh, piece of data of type AXP. And there will be four clauses uh, in, the, uh, in the inductive proof. So, so first it does the induction, which splits it up into four clauses. Uh, and then after the semicolon, each clause has uh, a different tactic executed at the beginning of it. What case aux does is the same as case, except that, well, so if C is the string case, then case aux C is exactly case. If case is the string, if, if C is the string S case, then case aux C is exactly what S case does, et cetera. So, uh, so this C here is 
uh, is a little bit of extra parameterization so that this AX cases can be used both at the top level for an outer case analysis or uh, inside of uh, some other case analysis for a subcase analysis and so on. Uh, and, uh, and so at whatever level it is, I'll show you a use of it in a second, that will make it clearer. At whatever level it is, it's basically inserting the cases at the beginning of uh, the, uh, the corresponding uh, subproofs. So, <clears throat> for instance, I can do AX cases, induction E case, uh, and what that will do is it will leave me with four subgoals, one for each of the cases of AX, but each of those subgoals will be labeled in the way that the case um, tactic labels things. Why is that good? It's good because I can do AX cases, induction E case, semicolon, and then a bunch of things that are going to knock out some of the cases, the easy ones. Uh, and what's going to be left are just a few cases. And now when I, when I so after the period following the, uh, following the induction, when I get dumped into uh, now you need to prove this subgoal mode, I'm going to have a string in the context that tells me which subgoal I'm in. And this is incredibly useful. All right, this this uh, is uh, very important for helping you stay uh, oriented uh, when you're doing a big, complicated, semi-automated inductive proof, uh, because uh, because it means that uh, that uh, you always know, oh, now I'm in this case, and by the way, when you finish with this case, you notice that the string changes, and now you're now now you know, ah, now I'm proving different case. Moreover, the case tactic that we already defined all, all the way back at the beginning does something a little bit special uh, that, uh, that is incredibly useful, which is, so notice that the, the AX cases is going to insert a string into the context of each of the subgoals. Here, this case also inserts a string into the context of the subgoal. Right, so this is what we've seen all along. But if there's already a string there, uh, it, has the, it has the effect of checking that what's there is what we're inserting now. Okay, so why is that useful? Well, suppose that, uh, that I get the, uh, the try stuff a little bit wrong, or I change my definition and I reorder the cases, uh, and now I try and rerun this proof. Instead of just some tactic failed in the middle and I have no idea what happened, uh, I will get a failure from this case tactic that says you aren't proving the subcase that you think you are. Okay, so this is this is why this is uh, this is a uh, an invention of my student Aaron Bohannon, so I'm proud of it. Uh, it um, uh, it makes uh, it makes big proofs about uh, about complicated definitions much much less painful. Okay, time to stop for this morning. Um, and uh, so we've been through the rest of the prop chapter, the logic chapter, and the beginning of the imp chapter. The beginning of the imp chapter is, uh, there aren't really such interesting exercises yet, but you'll find some exercises in the other two chapters, and we'll continue on from where we stopped tomorrow. <laughs>